Madam Secretary, if you want to go ahead and call roll. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ana Armenta and I am the Arizona Racing Commission Secretary. Today is May 17th, 2023, the 711th Arizona Racing Commission um, regular meeting taking place via Google Meets and I will do the roll call. Chair Coolidge. Present. Vice Chair Olson. Present. Commissioner French Contreras. I'm here. Commissioner York. Present. Thank you. We have a quorum. It is now 12 p.m. and the floor is all yours, Chair. Thank you, ma'am. I'll call to order the 711th Arizona Racing Commission meeting of Wednesday, May 17th, 2023. Uh, jumping into the action items, uh, it's about time that we've done a new election as far as uh, the commission goes. So I'll just open it up to see if anybody has any nominations or wants to move forward there. I'm fine okay. with things the way they are. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, if we don't have any objections, we can just table this and keep going. Well, um, this is Candace. Do you prefer that we actually nominate you and our vice chair again for another a uh, year or do we want to just leave it alone what's the best way to handle this because i agree i we're fine with the status quo um it, if that's the way y'all want to go that's probably a cleaner path for us but we can we can absolutely chair or excuse me table this and move it forward <clears throat> Um, I'll make a motion to appoint um, Chairman Chuck Coolidge uh, as our chair and uh, we'll make that a, a single motion, then we'll do a separate one. Second. Okay. Madam Secretary. Thank you. I have a motion by Commissioner French Contreras and a second by um, Chair Vice Chair Olson. I will do the roll call. Chair Coolidge? Yes. Vice Chair Olson? Yes. Commissioner French Contreras? Yes. Commissioner York? Yes. With a total of four yeses, thank you. That motion passes. <clears throat> thank you, everyone. Appreciate that. Uh, do we have another motion for the vice chair? I'll make a motion to um, appoint uh, Commissioner Tracy Olson as vice chair. I'll second. second. Uh, actually, Commissioner York uh, can have a second. Thank second. you. I have a motion by... Commissioner French Contreras and a second by Commissioner York. And I will take the roll call. Chair Coolidge? Yes. Vice Chair Olson? Yes. Commissioner French Contreras? Yes. Commissioner York? Yes. With a total of four yeses, thank you. That motion passes. Down to oh, Commissioner York, go ahead. Just a quick question on this a point of clarification. Um, so in February of 2024, we would have an election again and we'd stay on a February annual rotation. Is that, am I interpreting what Mr. Duncan wrote in the packet correctly? I actually didn't see that, but I'm more than okay with it. So uh, Mr. Duncan, if you can flag that for our, uh, was that February you said, Commissioner York? Uh, it, it appears from what he wrote, and he's probably best to explain it, that 
we do it on an annual basis in February for a one-year term. Perfect. Uh, Mr. Duncan, I'm going to go ahead and appoint you to be the one to uh, flag that for the agenda for February, please. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, I'll put it on the agenda. Appreciate it, sir. Thank you, yes, Commissioner sir. York, for putting that to my attention. Uh, we'll jump down to action item B2. Rio Park Racing is requesting a dark day simulcast approval for June 10th at Belmont. Um, looks like we have everything we need there. But Mr. Duncan, do you have anything to add to that or do any of my commissioners have any questions? Otherwise, I'll move that we approve the dark day simulcast for June 10th for Rio Park Racing. Second. I think you have a motion by Chair Coolidge and a second by Commissioner York. I will call the roll. Chair Coolidge? Yes. Vice Chair Olson? Yes. Commissioner French Contreras? Yes. Commissioner York? Yes. With a total of four yeses, thank you. That motion passes. I'm down to B3 simulcast agreements pursuant to ARS 5-112U uh, for Turf Paradise. Looking through these. Uh, Mr. Duncan, do you have any last minute additions or anything to add to these? Uh, no, sir, Mr. Chairman. Uh, there are no additions. Everything has been uh, put in the packets and everything um, is complete. Everything does look in order. Any questions or comments from my commissioners? Otherwise, I'll move that we approve uh, action item 3A for Turf Paradise 1 through 13. Second. Thank you. I have a motion by uh, Commissioner Chair Coolidge and a second by Commissioner York. I will call the roll. Chair Coolidge. Yes. Vice Chair Olson? Yes. Commissioner French Contreras? Yes. Commissioner York? Yes. With a total of four yeses, thank you. That motion passes. Going down to 3B for Rito for Belmont Park. Looks like we have everything in order unless I'm missing something, Mr. Duncan. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Everything is complete in the packet. I'll move that we approve item 3B for Rito for Belmont Park. I'll second that. Thank you, I have a motion by Chair Coolidge and a second by Commissioner French Contreras. I will call the roll. Chair Coolidge? Yes. Vice Chair Olson? Vice Chair Olson? My apologies, some technical difficulties, yes. <laughs> Commissioner French Contreras? Yes. Commissioner York? Yes. With a total of four yeses, that motion, thank you, that motion passes. Thank you, ma'am. Moving to 4A, simulcast horse racing import signals pursuant to the IHA section 3004A3, Turf Paradise. Uh, looks like we have some in and out. Uh, Mr. Duncan, thanks for attaching these. Do we have any last minute additions for eight through 13, sir? Uh, no, sir, Mr. Chairman, there are no updates on the items uh, 8 through 13 for Turf Paradise. As far as 1 through 7 go, it looks like we have everything in order here. Any questions or comments from my commissioners on these? Otherwise, I'll move that we approve action item 4A, 1 through 7. Second. Thank you. I have a motion by Chair Coolidge and a second by Commissioner York. I will call the roll. Chair Coolidge? Yes. Vice Chair Olson? Yes. Commissioner French Contreras? Yes. Commissioner York? Yes. <clears throat> With a total of four yeses, thank you. That motion passes. I'll also move that we conditionally approve 4A8 through 13 pending they submit the required documents and leave it to the department to give final approval so the permittee doesn't see a delay. Second. 
Thank you. I have a motion by Chair Coolidge and a second by Commissioner York. I will call the roll. Chair Coolidge? Yes. Vice Chair Olson? Yes. Commissioner French Contreras? Yes. Commissioner York? Yes. With a total of four yeses, thank you. That motion passes with conditional approval. Dropping down to 4B, <clears throat> excuse me, Rito. Looks like we have everything in order here, unless Mr. Duncan has anything to add. Otherwise, no, sir, I'll Mr. Chairman, everything is complete. Yes, sir. We'll move to 4B. Uh, I'll move that we approve 4B Rito for Belmont Park. I'll second that motion. Thank you. I have a motion by Chair Coolidge and a second by Commissioner York. I will call the roll. Chair Coolidge? Yes. Vice Chair Olson? Yes. Commissioner French Contreras? Yes. Commissioner York? Yes. With a total of four yeses, thank you. That motion passes. Move down to the track safety report. Dr. Gale, do you want to kick us off there if you're on the line? Yes, thank you, uh, Chair Coolidge, uh, Commissioners. Uh, good afternoon. I'm uh, just wrapping up here at Turf Paradise. The last day of racing was May 6th, and uh, the last horse left uh, a couple days ago, and so it's a little bit of a lonely place back here. Uh, just a, a review of the figures uh, on uh, breakdowns and fatalities. Uh, the 12-month rolling average for all racetracks in Arizona from uh, May through April uh, was 2.24. Again, comparing to uh, the updated national rate that was um, published in March of 1.25. So again, we remain higher than the national average. Uh, through that uh, last week of racing in May, that went down to 2.10. And uh, again, the national average is 1.25. Uh, in comparison to um, the previous year um, of, uh, um, excuse me, uh, June, June 1st through May 31st of 2022, uh, it was 2.59, actually five fewer horses breaking down thoroughbreds again. Um, the previous year compared to this current year. Um, just to break down, we have uh, the full meets then for each of the individual tracks um, uh, for 22-23 season. Uh, Arizona Downs was 2.17, Rito Park was 1.64, and Turf Paradise was 2.14. Uh, so some, some improvement. Um, if I had to try to attribute anything, um, uh, I think that, um, well, again, I, I did have a second veterinarian working alongside me with pre-race exams uh, during the month of March, April, and May. Uh, all the horses were getting complete exams. There were a, a higher number of horses getting scratched either on pre-race exams or uh, on the track uh, before the gate. Um, I think, again, the examinations were uh, uh, very helpful in, in accomplishing that. Uh, the void claim rule was reinstated um, end of March, and there were several horses that uh, had their claims voided. So, again, I think that does have a benefit. Um, that's pretty much what I have. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to take them. Mr. York. Dr. Gale, is there any uh, post report on Rito Park's use of, I think it was called Stride Safe? You know, I haven't heard anything about that. Um, I don't know if uh, Mike Weiss will have some information on that later uh, in his report, but uh, it would have been uh, pretty interesting to see how many horses were flagged um, because, again, they were doing pre race exams down there as well. Um, and uh, uh, just to kind of get an idea of what percentage of the horses maybe aren't showing lameness to the naked eye, but perhaps are showing some irregularities on stride safe. Uh, during the meet, uh, racing four or five days every, every week, uh, 
I wasn't really able to keep up on that, but it would be a definite follow through. We should maybe have something of a report like that on the next meeting. That would be great. Thank you. Vice Chair Olson. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Dr. Gale, for your presentation. Um, I found your comments interesting regarding things we've done this year that have improved our numbers. Looking forward, is there anything you think um, should be focused on to continue to improve our safety numbers? Well, there's there's a number of avenues, um, and again, that'll be something to look at over the summer here. And uh, with without racing, there'll be more time to review. Um, kind of the flagging of horses that are at risk um uh, so and then also um uh, making sure we get the exam findings into the computer um so that we have them for future reference um again that those were some staffing issues that uh, hopefully we'll be able to repair in the future um I guess about the only other thing um, that I can think of really is is really following up a bit more. There, there were a number of horses that got flagged for being lame after the race. And again, due to staffing limitations, it wasn't always possible to go follow up on those horses and find out were they truly lame? Uh, and if so, get them on the vet list. Um, so sometimes those horses were maybe lost to follow up if we weren't able to get that exam done. And they may be re-entered back, and and uh, again, that information maybe wasn't front, front and center when we were taking a look at the horse on race day. So the more information we can get on these horses before we look at them, definitely the better. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Ma'am. Appreciate your input as always. Uh, another item that we're going to be bringing up is. Uh, Brian Duncan on the track safety report. But before we do, just want to let everyone know I talked to um, actually if, if Director Johnson's on. I'm happy to have her speak as well. But I spoke with her yesterday and I know Director Casillas uh, and she will be moving forward on quite a bit of cross training and additional training to make sure that we have multiple people that are able to do the track safety report. Uh, should one not be able to do it, someone else can step in and uh, really making a lot of good strides as far as that goes. So I'm excited to see that and have asked that uh, once those measures are in place that they come and uh, speak to that during a commission meeting. So look forward to that. Mr. Duncan, do you have any additional items for the track safety report? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Um, I supplied you guys with the uh, Santa Cruz County Fair um inspection and uh i got a kind of a synopsis of of the the two-day weekend we had there and i'll go over that if you if you'd like like me to yes, so sir, i please. i did uh, i did three inspections on santa cruz uh county fair in sonoida before uh, they opened on may 6th um during those inspections um i kept up to date with the fair manager Lacey Byer and County uh, Board Member Ed Gaines. Um, as always, they walked with us during our inspections, gave insight on their updates, uh, not only on the track, but uh, the new track equipment that they purchased in the barn area uh, as we got closer to the opening day. Did the final inspection on Friday, May 5th. Uh, the track again felt good and even across the track, they expressed uh, the track and everything else was going good. Everyone was ready to go. Uh, I let them know to continue to do rock walks every day. Uh, it's always a good practice to keep everyone safe. Um, inspected the track equipment again, and uh, everything again looked good. Uh, went over the weekend assignments with the sheriff's officers and uh, their sta stations and duties. Also talked to uh, Mark Meredith, the fire chief uh, in Elgin. Went over the duties for the EMTs. Saturday, May 6th, I again walked the track. Felt good throughout. Vets were doing their pre-race exams, Lasix for each race. Track preparations were made prior to the races. Uh, Saturday was uh, had a really huge crowd. Um, everyone wanting to watch uh, not only the fair races, but the Kentucky Derby. Uh, every race, the mutuals did have to ask for a few extra minutes uh, to uh, help the, the crowd place their bets in, in a timely manner. Uh, all the races went uh, went well on Saturday. No injuries to equines or humans. 
Then on Sunday, uh, again, I walked the track. Everything felt good. It was still in good shape. Um, I didn't feel that the track was getting compact on any part of the track or was soft in inner areas. Again, vets were doing their pre-race exams, doing the Lasix. Again, uh, track man did make his preparations prior to the races. Uh, first race of the day, we did have two horses involved in an incident. Uh, both horses had minor injuries. One jockey was examined and continued to ride the rest of the day. Uh, another went for further evaluation. In the fifth race, however, did have a horse breakdown. After the race, uh, the vets did, uh, after examination, did uh, humanely euthanize the horse. Uh, we also did get some complaints after the race. The uh, track was getting uneven, softer on the inside and outside, and uh, where the water truck runs was starting to get a little compacted. Stewards and I went down uh, to check the track. We uh, also talked to the jockeys, the vets, and management. Uh, after discussing uh, with everybody, uh, what we could do, the decision was made to have the track superintendent uh, work the middle of the track with the uh, with the harrows to see if we could get it even all the way across. He worked with the harrow uh, several passes. It was still inconsistent. Uh, the track superintendent then grabbed another drag, uh, which had longer teeth and was a little bit heavier and did a few more laps down the center. Again, it was inspected. Um, it was still not to the satisfactory of everyone. So after the stewards met with the uh, management, the board members, um, they decided that for the safety and welfare of both the humans and the equine athletes, it'd be best to cancel the last three races of that day. Uh, since then, I have spoken with uh, Ms. Beyer, talked to her about how we can pre prevent uh, canceling uh, races in the future. Uh, we spoke about having track surface tested uh, see if maybe adding sand or organics will help uh, keep the middle from becoming more compact, hold moisture better. Uh, one of the bigger problems down in uh, Sonoida is uh, the wind. It uh, it blows constantly down there, so you do have to keep lots of water on it. Um, I am going to keep working with Ms. Beyer and their board members to ensure the track is safe for next year. Um, if you do have any questions, uh, I'd be more than happy to answer them. I also believe... Uh, Ms. Beyer is also on the meeting, and I'm sure would answer any questions for you guys as well. Thank you, sir. Appreciate the update there. Any questions from my commissioners? <clears throat> Thank you, none. Otherwise, we'll move down to C2 for the budget report. Director Casillas or Mr. Duncan. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Latrina Rosemond should be on to give that uh, budget report. Yes, I'm here. Ma'am. Hi, can we do the next slide? There we go. So um, slide one, this chart shows the total spend, which includes what we've already spent this fiscal year, as well as the funds that we've encumbered. The total spend is under the appropriation line, which means that we're spending within budget. Um, we anticipate the rate of which we are spending to increase towards the end of the year due to two reasons. One, ADG's box and division have maxed out their appropriation last month and will begin to spend against the race in appropriation. And is set to do so. It is set to do so by the legislature. And two, because the race and division have staffing vacancies that we're trying to fill. Next slide, please. This chart shows the total cash balance, which appears very healthy at an amount higher than the annual appropriation, which indicates at least a year's worth of cash reserves. However, if we are successful in filling our staffing vacancies, then the rate of which we're spending will increase and we would need to monitor and ensure that the revenue would not um, cover, that the revenue will cover the increased spending. Next slide. And here's just a breakdown of the revenue and expenses by category. You guys can take a look at this. Um, um, so this is kind of self-explanatory. This is what we have um, fiscal year to date revenue by type. Um, and the very bottom is the total spend, including all the encumbrances for the year thus far. It's the $1.6 million. 
Thank you. I'm good. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. That's great. Okay. Back to my other screen here. We'll drop down to C3. Uh, Mr. Gasman, are you back with us? Or do we have an AZ HPPA associate for this? Commissioner Coolidge, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Chairman Coolidge, this is Lloyd Yost there, President of the Arizona HPPA. Mr. Leroy Yost, was going to be on the cut was going to be on the call and I've, uh, I'm not, I don't have a, a report to make on the, uh, uh, on his report, but, uh, I don't know what the issue was. I couldn't get on the, I'm on the phone with this. Uh, uh I had problems getting on the, the meeting today as well, but, uh, uh, I don't know of anything to report for Leroy at this point in time. Okay. Thank you, sir. I know we're getting, uh, the reports, internally as well but um hopefully next month we'll be able to get an update drop okay, down i'll make sure that thank you sir appreciate it drop down to c4 the permitting reports american greyhound racing arizona downs uh, yes chairman coolidge uh and commissioners tom author i kind of want to go through where we are here um and then take any questions if you have any we uh if you go through the recordings of the previous meetings we have a permit for fiscal 2024 subject to financial review we ask for dates within that permit period director casillas i believe said you don't have the money to run I mean, to dictate that we don't have the money to run 14 months prior to a uh, race meet is probably not very fair. Uh, we do intend to run then. However, with the shutting down of our OTB system, it's going to make it tough. And as an aside, I'm kind of wondering whatever happened to the heart racing permit that's fit. It's just been crickets. I don't know why that. Nothing was ever done on that, but that would have been very helpful for the horsemen and for us to run a meet. But all of this is really unnecessary and it's inevitable because of the director's refusal to enforce ARS 5112-C. He's attempting to shut us down and has with all sorts of uh, statutes, some of which apply, some of which don't, but he continues to ignore the statute that says we get the signal during our meet, turf gets it during theirs. That's a law. It's the way things used to be. It fixes everything. There's no way we can sustain. Everybody says run, 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 but we're not going to let you participate in the OTB system. We have no choice in the meantime but to set up our own system. And even at that, we were told that until the Monarch situation gets figured out, we're not going to be able to get that either. So expand our meat. So that's one way to fix it. Um, so where are we now? We don't have an OTB system. Our requested dates are going to be hard to meet because you've shut us down. Turf is under contract. I think the latest is they're supposed to sell if they sell in October. That probably means they're not going to have a fall meet. We can't fill a gap on that either now because we don't have an OTB system. They've already started to cherry pick our OTBs. Money that we spent setting up those OTBs uh, is are now falling into their hands, which is what happened when we shut down before. He inherited an OTB system. He didn't. He didn't get a bunch of stuff that was already his. So my suggestion is, you approve our race dates, subject to financial approvals, and uh, we uh, negotiate with the horsemen on the signal. That's a separate issue. And hopefully we can negotiate with the horsemen without any further interference from Director Casillas. Uh, so that's our report. Any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Uh, uh, since this is Jerry Sims, since you mentioned us, 
Mr. Uh, Sims, Mr. Sims, Mr. Sims, you're you're going to have an opportunity to speak when it gets to your pit permittee report. And Mr. Embornonium, uh, I know myself among the other commissioners have received your documents as well as your documents, Mr. Author. Uh, I, I'm not going to have a, a legal dispute as far as the permittee reports go. Um, we we do receive everything and we review them. As far as as coming back up to the Arizona Downs report. Um, Mr. Author, I have reached out to the department. We we received that paperwork. I want to say it was 48 hours, maybe 72 hours on the high side before this meeting. Um, so we will be looking into it, and I have asked for a, a legal review that we will be having on top of uh, discussions with Director Casillas. So um, hopefully we'll have some resolve there, but otherwise, uh, we're going to move down to permittee unless any of my commissioners have any questions. I, I understand. I, I just want to. I just want to break out the our negotiations with the horseman and the signal, with this intent on the part of the director to take our permit. For some reason, I don't really understand because we can't run a meet financially, or those are two separate issues. That's all I really have to say. And, and I'd be very interested in seeing the financial stability that you're talking about as far and additionally seeing now this is the first time I've heard since last meeting that you do intend to run a meet. Well, we filed for dates. We were just, uh, and, and and please understand in the past, the, the, the commission has always said, we're not going to prove you unless you can prove you can run, but there's no sense telling you you can't run in April of 23 when you're not going to run till May of 24. We've at the last minute we brought in P2E, so we were able to run. We brought in some other investors, so I, I think to, to to tell us we can't run now, you know, is is maybe next February. Say sorry, buddy, you don't have the money. Uh, you didn't run during your permit period. We're taking your permit. That's not the case now. Unfortunately, the state money has gone away. Um, that would have helped everybody. Uh, you know, we we uh, we didn't see any reason to. You know, we probably could have pitched in on that, but there was no reason for us to, you know, with you guys doing your best to shut us down, you know, what can we do? So uh, 90%, 80% of money went to turf anyway. So anyway, but but we did file for dates and we did get an approval for fiscal 2024 subject to those, uh, our financial. That, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just confused. Uh, I'm confused too, frankly. If, if now you're saying, you're submitting for dates, but you're probably not going to run. Is that what I'm hearing? No, no, no. We, we we submitted for dates in our during our fiscal 2024 permit, and it is a my fiscal. Question, my question to you, sir, is: Do you plan on running a full horse meet? So, yeah, based on those dates we submitted, which were uh, May through uh, September of 2024, and. And you're financially capable of doing so? Well, I mean, if we had to run today, no. But that's why we didn't submit for this May. But we will, we, we think we'll be financial. Even if we have to cut some checks ourselves, we should be financially capable next year. But but again, there's no, why don't we sit down in February and say, and you could say, we don't want you, to, we're not going to let you run. You don't have the money. Or you may say you got the money, go ahead and run. There's just that's what you've always done in the past. There's no reason to deny us today and shut our signal off, which guarantees that we can't run. Uh, hey, Mr. Yother, I'd, I'd appreciate your input as far as running a, a race meet with no AZHBPA permit or approval, excuse me. Well, that that's uh, that's our, our, our uh, uh, understanding or, or, or uh, I don't know how to explain it that if you do not run a, in, in a physical year uh, or calendar year I guess it would be in a calendar year the, uh, then uh, we don't give the signal for uh, import uh, imports for uh, um, for the OTBs Yes, sir. Uh, I, I don't. I, I, I'm confused on the fact that w w when does the permit run from? Uh, does it run from a physical year, a, uh, a, a, a calendar year? Um, uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I guess I think what Tom's trying to say is 
Then he ran in 23, the latter part of, or excuse me, 22, and I don't know how long his permit is good for, through 2023, 24. Uh, I'm, I'm confused on this issue as well. So I, I think that we need to take a, a, a harder look at this. At this point in time, we have no contract with him because with uh, uh, Arizona Downs because their permit expired May 8th. Well, we, we, yeah, and direct, uh, Commissioner Coolidge, that's a good question, it's, but it's a separate issue. We are, we were negotiating with the HBPA. In fact, I have a letter here from, that says, Tom, we're currently working on a resolution of these issues and we'll keep you informed. And that was on May 5th. Well, subsequent to that, they were advised by Director Casillas that they couldn't, they couldn't send the signal in because we didn't have a contract. No, I mean, we need the HBPA's approval. There's no question about that. But the commission's position and job is different. Uh, if, if, the, if the HBP, for whatever reason, wants to shut our signal off, they can shut it off. But it's, that's really a negotiation between us and the HBPA, and I don't really think the commission has any business interfering with that contract negotiation. So, uh, I mean, for right now, we who knows, maybe... A week ago, we could have finally settled and we could have, but unfortunately, uh, our, our, our OTV system has been decimated. So what do we do now? We, you, we had to fire 30 people. We're in breach of our leases. Um, we Tom, were having- Tom, Tom, this is Lloyd again. May I interject something? That yes. communication I wrote on May the 5th uh, was that the fact that you had brought up these issues that you should be able to run uh, or, or receive your import signals because you ran the latter part of 22 and we're, uh, we're projecting to run in 24. But I, my, my, my intentions was that we would continue to talk on this, pro uh, on this issue and try to come to a resolution. We were not in negotiations at that point in time. So, uh, no, I agree. We were, we're I, just want, I just want to make that point of clarification. We're continuing to talk, and I think we could have made a deal based upon what I'm saying now. But it's going to be tough to do now because we don't have an OTB oh, system. Oh, oh. We could only come to that conclusion only if the department would agree to it. Then uh, it, it, it was my understanding that that uh, you guys weren't uh, had not well. I don't know if you applied for dates or not, but that you weren't running in 23. Well, so with that being said, we we said that that that, that we would stop the import signal. Well, I, I think Chuck, see, uh, Commissioner, could see what's going on here, but but you know we have a permit. We were negotiating. We're we're we're, we're with the HPP. We're having. A, I think we could have come to an agreement. It's going to be darn hard to do now, though, because we <laughs> we I, I don't. I just don't. It's just it's uh, nobody was helped by insisting that they shut our signal off. But you know whatever. Hope you know, we're still under contract with Stronic. Uh, that's so, Mr. Author, you know, in order to be of any assistance to you, can I put together a meeting with the department and the attorneys to see if we can come to a resolution? Or sure, sure. I mean, I, I, I think yeah. it's incumbent on us to make a deal with the HBPA because, regardless of what you guys do, so you know, Mr. So Author, what I what I'm going to do is is uh, Mr. Casillas or Director Casillas, excuse me. Uh, I'll also ask that you uh, bring in. Director Johnson to uh, sit down with the attorneys and put a meeting together with Arizona Downs, if you don't mind, sir. Will do, sir. With Let's put a stipulation on that within, let's say, 10 days. Okay. We'll be there. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll move down to 4C, County Fairs. Ms. Lacey. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, this is Lacey Byer. I'm with the Santa Cruz County Fair. Um, we are very proud that we've been able to continue the tradition of horse racing on a county fair level. As you can imagine, there have been a lot of discussions on our end to ensure that what happened at our race uh, does not happen again. We are willing to do whatever we need to do to make sure that our track is safe, including having it tested and make sure to make sure that it's ready to go and that it maintains consistency throughout our race meet. 
Um, we appreciate all of your support and we are willing to do whatever it is necessary to keep everything safe on our end. Thank you, ma'am, appreciate it. Um, like I said before, I am excited to know that the department will be cross-training many people to be able to help in instances like that, uh, give you a little bit of bandwidth as far as evaluation and uh, making sure that it is as safe as, as possible. So please use those resources accordingly and, and we'll uh, keep an eye on things. We will, we will do that. Thank you very much. Rito Park. Mr. Wise. Turf Paradise. Yes, this is Jerry Sim. This is Jerry Sim. I'd just like to, like to respond and then <clears throat> perhaps um, Brian, uh, my attorney, Brian, can respond. Uh, you know, if if you don't have to run a meet and you can just run OTBs, there's no need for me to run a meet. I can skip a year. If they can go 22, run a meet, no, they don't run a meet till maybe in April of 24. Why am I busy putting on a whole show, running a whole meet, losing a bunch of money to do it? Um, if, if, if under that 81 or 82 case, uh, everybody has to be treated. The tracks must be treated the same. You can't give one treatment to one and different treatment to another. So uh, a couple other points to make. Um, all my contracts with my OTBs, with Turf's OTBs, are all exclusive. They do not want, as we found out with Padre Murphy's, they don't want Arizona Downs running my OTBs. Uh, or being in their business. They want their deals are with us exclusively. And that corresponds with my dark days that I've been given to run OTBs. It's in my permit that we can run OTBs all year round. And this thing that, uh, that, that Tom Arthur keeps pointing to from 10, 15 years ago, you know, at that time, it was totally different. The county was there, number one. You had to run one for one. That was another rule. You had to run one day for every day a dark day. Then that law got changed because we did away with it. Because of it. But when the county ran, her paradise ran their meat. My mutual manager went up to Prescott. Our people went up and ran the meat. I wasn't turning my, OT, my, my business over. Somebody else talking. I, I didn't turn my business over to somebody else to run. The most valuable asset that Turf Paradise has is our OTB system. And if anybody thinks that you can just reach in and take somebody's property and say, here, you, you other guys that haven't been financially sound, that have done a lot of bad things that I don't want to list, uh, you, you could just take Jerry Sims, Turf Paradise's OTB, their most valuable asset, and here, you run it. And hopefully when you give it back to them, it'll still have the tellers and everybody in place and everybody not angry. And all. It's just not happening. But please, if there's going to be a way to run a, a, without running a year and still have an OTB system, I want to do the same thing. This is I'll put it in writing. If, they, if you can do it, I want to do it. And that would violate my permit, which says I can run OTBs all year long. So. Anyway, I'll let my attorney take the rest of the time, but thank you for listening, Chairman and Commissioners. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. M. Bornoni, not to keep cutting your legs out from under you, but uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd love to hear uh, any updates as far as the track goes and, and the permittee side. Uh, I think the commission, unless any of my commissioners disagree with me and would like to hear more on this issue, uh, I think we've been pretty well versed as far as where we are at this point. Chairman Coolidge, Lloyd Jother, uh, HBPA again. Uh, just a point of clarification, Mr. Sims just stated his uh, most valuable asset is his OTBs. Uh, we as horsemen feel like we're his most valuable asset. Without us, live racing, there is no OTBs, period. And that's the reason we're in this uh, uh, conflict now with trying to figure out what what is right and what is wrong and who can and who can't but with 
it really disheartens me the fact that uh, that uh, Sims thinks his most valuable asset. He's proven that all along. His most valuable asset are OTVs, and that's all he's in it for. He did. He could care less about the horsemen or live horse racing. That's it. I just like to have that on the record, please. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I'd like to respond to that, and I'm sorry you feel that way, Lloyd. But let me say this to you: on the assets, the books and records of Turf Paradise, we have assets. And of those assets is what I'm talking about. Obviously, we need horsemen to have a, a, a races. We can't have horse. We can't have races without horsemen. And of course, I value my horsemen. But when I was talking about my assets, I'm talking about what's on the books of Turf Paradise. I understand and the that, but I got your not, comments as, they're a, they're as a negative toward the horsemen. Well, it's not a negative towards the horsemen at all. Of course, we need the horsemen. What do you think we're out uh, doing jobs all this summer, projects and all kinds? Of, nothing has stopped, by the way. We have a, and, and nothing has stopped as far as the projects we're doing for the summer, uh, wiring and barns and all, everything to do with it. So I put my money where my mouth is. May I ask for a meeting with someone at the track to show me what you're doing this summer? Because my understanding is there's nothing going on until the, the potential sale no. or no sale goes through. That's very fair, Lloyd. Uh, yes, you may sit down and Mr. Mayor will go across the summer projects with you. I just got one big tractor back. We have a. I don't want to go across them. Here. I don't want to see them on paper. I want to see them in action. Well, they're going on. They're they're they're, they're happening. Well, that, now. That, 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 then then he'll be able to I'm, then he'll be able to show me. Gentlemen, I'm going to interrupt, I'm uh, Mr. Yoser. I, I appreciate. I think it. that request is is valid, and uh, you know, y'all can work with the department as far as we move forward, but. We're going to go ahead and thank move you, on. sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, we're going to go to C5 Opti Optional Industry Stakeholder Association updates, Arizona Counties Racing Association. Arizona Quarter Horse Racing Association. Lloyd Yother again, the president of the Arizona Quarter Racing Association. We have nothing to report at this time. We're uh, uh waiting for to, for the next shoe to fall on one of these tracks that hopefully that we have live racing uh in the years to come in arizona thank you very much appreciate it sir arizona thoroughbred breeders association hbpa lord yoser again with uh, chairman uh, uh chairman coolidge can you hear me now Yes, sir. I guess I finally learned how to push star six. But anyway, sorry I wasn't able to make the connection on the Heiser report. Uh, it's very short, but I, I just wanted to briefly update you. Every All five cases uh, across the country are just waiting for judges' opinions. Uh, case one has got two things in place. Uh, we, we, ha I have, uh, appealed the, uh, district court's decision that Heise was uh, constitutional and we are going back to the fifth district court of appeals. We're waiting on that. We've also asked the fifth district court of appeals to, uh, stop Heise from implementing on May, uh, 22nd. Um, we expect to hear this week whether they're going to allow Haiwu to uh, to uh, start up again or if they will still be suspended. Uh, the other thing with uh, on HISA I would like to let you know is the National HBPA has been working very hard with Senator Grassley and several uh, legislators in Washington, and we have drafted a new bill uh, that is uh, somewhat different than HISA, but still accomplishes a lot of the same things. Uh, it is now, right now, uh, in the hands of Ed Martin for his review. Uh, we're hoping Ed Martin will, in, and the uh, ARCI will endorse it, and uh, we hope to get it out on the floor in Washington uh, sometime in June. Uh, I do want to just go back on Dr. Gale's uh, report. I have a couple comments. 
I, I want to say that since the work was done on the racetrack and uh, the work done by uh, the track crew and Mr. Uh, Mr. Francia uh, putting sand on the track on a frequent basis, something they had never done before, but Mr. Francia uh, decided to start putting it on on a regular basis. And along with the fact that we had an extra person helping Dr. Gale do veterinarian checks, pre-race checks in the mornings. I think you will notice uh, after those two programs went into effect, there was a dramatic decrease in uh, racing fatality. Uh, and I, I'm just hoping that when we go into the new year, uh, that we start off the new year with the track prepared properly, unlike the last couple of years. And I'm hoping that uh, we have the adequate uh, staff for Dr. Gale to do her job properly, and we can uh, keep uh, keep this fatality rate on the decline. Uh, unless you have any questions, that's all I have. I appreciate the update, sir, and I agree with your sentiments. Chairman Coolidge, Lloyd Yelter again, nice of uh, the uh, Arizona HBPA. I'd yes, just sir. like to give a brief report on we've we had an election in April. We uh, we have a uh, election every three years. Um, I was elected president. We have ten directors, six of which were replaced by new directors, and four were retained for an additional three years. So we got a new board of directors, but we all have the same uh, in in game, if you will, of keeping live racing and and doing what we can to promote horse racing and the safety of horses and, uh, and humans, trainers, uh, jockeys, and so forth. But that that's our new board, and we're just getting uh, with the meat shut down just recently. We've had uh, a lot of things that we're trying to get accomplished, but hopefully in the future we'll be more prepared for these meetings and more discussion that can be done uh, that, that we can do our best with. Thank you very much. Look forward to that, sir, and uh, appreciate all the help uh, offline that you were able to provide on, on some of my specific questions. So thank you for that. Well, thank you for asking. We'd be more than happy to help in any way we can. Appreciate it, sir. Jockeys Guild. Dropping down to the commission reports. Uh, any of my members have any matters be taken up upon future agendas? No, thank you, Commissioner. I'm I'm good. Thank you, ma'am. We'll move to the call to the public. Pull up my notes here. Yeah, this is. I just have one comment. This is Jerry Sims on the call to the public. Uh, <laughs> if there's a when you have a meeting uh, regarding uh, uh, what's going to happen with Arizona Downs, if it has any. Um, uh, bearing on turf paradise, then I'd like to be notified and be able to have me and council attend. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. Gore, you want to kick us off? Uh, sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman Coolidge, and congratulations on uh, getting reelected there as chairman. Uh, I just Thank wanted you. to bring up, um, uh, hopefully you're all familiar with the uh, handbook regarding open meetings, and as Mr. Sims there just alluded to, this meeting that you're putting together regarding Arizona Downs um, is probably, I believe, something that should be held in open meeting so that the public can participate and all parties can be uh, represented in such a meeting. Um, doing something behind closed doors uh, alludes that there's decisions and things being made uh, not in open meeting. That's all I have to say. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. I'll leave that to the department as it is a, a legal matter and they are trying to figure out what's happening there. But uh, appreciate you bringing it to our attention. Do I have anyone else that signed up for 
public comment. Mr. Nolan, go ahead. Uh, I did sign up, but I'll, uh, I'll, I'll reserve my comments for another time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Don't show anyone else. So uh, we'll move to announcements. The next scheduled commission meeting will be at 10 a.m. on Thursday, June 15th, 2023. Likely via Google Meet and is subject to change based on a quorum. That said, I'd hear a motion for adjournment. I'll move, move that we adjourn. Second. Thank you with the motion by Chair Coolidge and a second by Chair Vice Chair Olson. I will call the roll. Chair Coolidge? Yes. Vice Chair Olson? Yes. Commissioner French Contreras? Yes. Commissioner York? Yes. Thank you. Um, with a total of four yeses, uh, this meeting has adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Please exit the meeting. I'm sorry, it is 1257 and it has adjourned. Everyone can please exit. Thank you.